These are young women, aren't they? My, my, them kids have grown up. We're honored to have Alicia and Bethany with us, Mary with us in service. Praise God. Amen. I've heard they receive the Holy Ghost and things from what I understand. Yeah, that's awesome. That's what we need to do. Praise God. Amen. Well, <clears throat> there's a lot of people that are gathering uh, today. Uh, praise God with uh, their hearts and an attention drawn into the birth of Christ. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> Amen. And I'm glad of that. Amen. But uh, many people do not realize who he actually is. Amen. Praise God. And I believe he would have everybody to come to that understanding. Amen. Of who actually he was. Amen. Praise God. Jesus is not just a, you know, a good emotional story that we tell. You know, but he is... He is our creator. That's what the Bible t tells us. He is the one that made everything. Amen. And it's all about him. It shouldn't just be today, but it should be every day. But I am grateful for, amen, the time that people uh, take the opportunity. As John said, that he probably was not actually born this day. We don't know the day. But... You know, we're, I'm grateful. Uh, the Bible tells us if we esteem a day to the Lord, to the Lord we do esteem it, you know. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I guess I better let our young people be dismissed. Sister Carter's got something going with the young ones. Praise God. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Praise God. For those singers put together some wonderful songs this morning. Praise God. I'm glad to have Ruby down. Amen. Taylor, he don't say a whole lot. Praise God. But we're glad he's here. We're going to turn in our Bibles this morning. Praise God. I don't think John mentioned it, but there will be no evening service this evening. We want to give people time to spend with their families here on Christmas Eve. And uh, praise God. I think Mary came down from Tennessee, was it? Tennessee? Amen. I'll give you time to spend with your family. I know the Salinases are eating this up. I mean, see them grandbabies. Amen. Praise God. We're going to look in Luke chapter 2, verse number 11. Just one verse of scripture. Amen. It says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Amen. In years past, uh, I often try to read the whole Christmas story. I'm not going to do that this morning. Uh, but you can read it, and I would encourage you to do so. It's found in Luke. Uh, the first couple of chapters there has uh, the very more detailed uh, what took place. But also Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25 speaks of the birth of Christ. Amen. Praise God. So I would encourage you, you know, to... Uh, read it and, and remember, amen, amen, what the Lord has done for us, amen, and come into this world, amen. Well, let's pray. Lord, would you touch us today, uh, not only in this gathering, but Lord, in all places where men are gathering together in your name and truth, we ask you to, God, somehow let your message, uh, Lord, touch the hearts and lives and draw men unto you. We ask for grace now. Oh, Lord, that I might minister your word to this congregation. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated. Praise God. I told the church uh, that I would, you know, be talking about the birth of Christ this morning. 
And that's what I plan on doing. Praise God. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. There's lots of, of prophecy about uh, the Lord in the Old Testament. The Old Testament uh, is the time for those that may not be aware of it. I know some of you, so this is going to be you know, common knowledge to you, but uh, the Old Testament uh, was given before Jesus ever came. Amen. The New Testament tells about it's basically a biography of the life of Christ, the first four books in the Bible, in the New Testament, rather. The book of Acts being a, you might call it a, a history of the early Christian church after Jesus rose from the dead, what they did. And then there's letters after the book of Acts, Romans through Jude. Those are letters written to people that had converted to Christianity, had been uh, converted. And then the book of Revelation is uh, the real revealing of Jesus Christ. talks about his second coming, basically. That's what it wraps up. There's lots of things in there. Uh, but the Old Testament <clears throat> uh, spoke many, many things uh, about Jesus Christ. In fact, the whole Bible is about Jesus. Amen. It really is. You study it, it all revolves around him. And, uh, you know, all the way from the time that Adam and Eve sinned, uh, there was a promise, you know, uh, that about the woman's seed going to bruise the serpent's head. That was talking about Jesus. And so all the way back at the very beginning. <clears throat> and uh, there's many uh, prophecies. Uh, a prophecy is a word spoken in advance before it actually comes to pass. Uh, uh, thus, many prophecies, many things were spoken in the Old Testament uh, about Jesus Christ, amen, coming. And uh, the, the Bible is, uh, it is called the Word of God, amen. The only actual scriptures that I can recall off the top of my mind, uh, that God actually wrote himself was the Ten Commandments. That's the only ones that the rest of them uh, were, you, men were used, not any kind of men, but prophets, holy men of God, it called them. People that had uh, special endowments from God upon their lives, and God would use them and give them uh, they were used, their hands were written, were used to write the words, but they're God's words. They're not men's words about God. They are God's word to man, just using man as an instrument to pen those words. Amen? So, <clears throat> amen. And so we have throughout the Old Testament uh, prophecies, things spoken in advance concerning the one that was going to come into the world. And many things could be said about Jesus. Uh, Isaiah 53 has a lot of things about Jesus, about his going and suffering and all the things like that. But today we're talking about his birth. Amen. His coming into this world. His life is not necessarily about his birth. His life is about the cross. That's what he came into the world for. Amen. But... Uh, again, his birth was foretold, things that was going to happen. Uh, Micah is one place, Old Testament prophet. Micah 5, 2 says, But thou, uh, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, making reference to Bethlehem, the, the, the town, Bethlehem, uh, the, he said, Though you be little among the thousands of Judah, Yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. That says something about Jesus. He's going to come, and he's going to come <clears throat> uh, from Bethlehem. Amen? And uh, praise God. He's going to be the ruler of Israel, 
And his goings forth have been from old, from everlasting, eternally, in other words. Amen. That's fulfilled. Matthew uh, records this, that Jesus is fulfilling. This is, it says in Matthew 2, 1. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, he says, Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, or come to worship him. When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, Thou Bethlehem, land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. That's what he was, he was quoting Micah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. In uh, Luke chapter number 2 and verse number 4, Luke's another, I said uh, the, the, there's two versions of Jesus' birth. Uh, the past one that we just read was in Matthew, but this one, uh, Luke says this about the birth of Jesus, referencing whenever Herod was the king. And uh, it says in verse number four, And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days uh, were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger because there was no room uh, for them in the inn. Praise God. And verse number 12 says, And this shall be a sign unto you. This is the angel speaking to the shepherds that had been visited by the heavenly host. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Amen. Out of all places for Jesus to be born as in a manger. Amen. Praise God. He went to an, uh, his parents went to an inn. His parent being his mom, Jesus was not his real dad. Amen. Praise God. But uh, they went to the inn, and there was no room for them in the inn. So as we know the Christmas story, that they wound up in a, uh, in a stable. Amen. Praise God. And uh, he was uh, the, the, the heavenly host. If you read all of Luke, it tells about the angels coming and visiting the shepherds out in the field and then gave them the instructions that they were to go to Bethlehem, and there they would find the babe. Uh, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Amen. Jesus didn't come uh, in a manner of uh, riches, and though he was the king of glory, there's an old song that says, He left the splendor of heaven, knowing his destiny, to a lonely hill called Golgotha, there to lay down his life for us, for me. Amen. Praise God. Though he was rich, it says in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. He was rich. He's the wealthiest one. In fact, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills, it says. Amen. If he was hungry, you wouldn't have to ask any of us for something to eat. He owns everything. He is the creator. He is the Lord. Amen. But he chose to come in a very humble manner. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It says this about Mary. Think about Mary, uh, his mother. Amen. The one that, that the Lord chose to, to, to use as a, as a package. Amen. To make his entrance into the world. Amen. Today's people opening up a lot of packages, you know, or tomorrow actually. They're going to be opening up a lot of packages and there's gifts inside. Amen. Well, the Lord sent a package into this world. Amen. Praise God. He used Mary as that package. Amen. To overshadow. Amen. And brought salvation into this world. The greatest gift a man could have his salvation, and that only comes through Jesus. Amen. But look at the package. It wasn't a fancy package. Amen. Mary was just a 
common person. Amen? It says this about Mary in Luke 1, 46. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth uh, all generations shall call me blessed. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So Mary had, was at a low state. I'm glad God uh, doesn't just look to uppity people. He loves everybody. But I'm glad it doesn't matter your material status. Amen. What you have. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It's actually what you can give him. And it's not stuff because he owns it all. He wants you. Amen. That's what he wants. Praise God. <clears throat> Amen. There's several things that sometimes people uh, get kind of twisted and, and uh, you know, sometimes people uh, start telling a story. You ever seen uh, where people uh, uh, start saying something and the next thing you know it's unchanged completely? Uh, one time we had a church service and we lined everybody up on one side of the, uh, of the church, not, not in this church, uh, but when I was first gotten in church, they lined everybody up. There was an aisle over there, and they whispered a, a, a story uh, to, to the first person, and then they were supposed to repeat the story, you know, whisper it to the next person, to the next person, to the next person. It's a complete different story every time it got down to the end. Amen. And unfortunately, that's the way a lot of things happen uh, with the Scriptures, unless you go right back to the Scriptures, you know. People do that with the scriptures. They start telling things. They start believing certain things. And something sounds a little juicy, so they start telling somebody up. Uh, you, you ever had somebody that when they told a story, they kind of have a way of enhancing it? <laughs> and the next thing you know, it's not even the real story anymore. Amen. There's a lot of things like that in the Word of God that people have come up with. And you get all kinds of beliefs and all kinds of traditions and stuff because of those things. But we go back to the Word of God and we find out the truth. Right. Amen. Praise God. You know, you see, this time of year, you see uh, uh, nativity scenes a lot of times all over the place. And you see these, uh, you know, the baby Jesus and Mary and, the, and, and, and Joseph. And you see the... the uh, <clears throat> three wise men, and they come in and they're offering their gifts. All those things are true that the wise men did come and offer gifts, but they, they didn't come to the stable. Right. Amen. Did you know that? They didn't come and present gifts to Jesus at the stable, you know, whenever he was in swaddling clothes. It says in Matthew chapter 2, verse number 10, it says, And when they, the wise men, saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. They offered their gifts. I mean, in other words, Jesus was already in a house. And Herod, the king that the wise men went to visit and let them know about Jesus, where he was going to be born, the they looked, Herod wanted to know that. Uh, and the wise men were following the star looking for him. Amen. They went, and after the wise men went another way, instead of going to Herod after being warned of God not to go there, amen, Herod went and killed all the young children from two years and younger. So it's possibly Jesus could have been as much as two years in that range of age whenever those things took place. Praise God. Well, he was born in Bethlehem, and it talked about uh, many things. Amen. Praise God. It talked about him having a virgin birth. Amen. Praise God. Isaiah, which was a Old Testament prophet, uh, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14 says, Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Those were in those songs that we sang just a while ago. Amen. Matthew chapter 1, 23 uh, quotes the scripture when it references Jesus. And it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. But then it gives the interpretation of what that name Emmanuel. We know what his name is. His name is Jesus. Amen. Why did they call him Emmanuel? 
They call him Emmanuel because of what Emmanuel means. Amen. This child, not everybody understands and realizes who he actually is. Amen. But Emmanuel, it says, which being interpreted is, if you interpret what that name means, it means God with us. That's who this baby is. Amen. Yeah, but he's a baby. Yeah, he's God coming uh, in this form to this world. He's not one of the gods. There's only one God, and there's none other but he. That one and only God there is, the Bible says, he manifested himself in the flesh. Jesus Christ. Amen. Could you imagine how Mary felt to hold that child? She knew like nobody else knew who she had in her arm. She knew she was a virgin. She knew she had not been with any other man, no man at all. Amen. Praise God. But she was, the angel had visited her and told her that thing that should be born of you shall be called the Son of God because it's the Spirit. Mary had no sexual relation. She had the Spirit of the Lord overshadow her. And that holy thing that was born of her was called the Son of God because it was a product of God's Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Amen. In fact, John chapter 1, verse number 1, <clears throat> it bears this out. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. And a lot of people want to think that Jesus was God the Son as a second person, but that's not what the Bible's saying. Amen. It's saying, In the beginning. What's the beginning? God had no beginning. Amen. But the world had a beginning. Amen. Our world had a beginning and it's going to have an ending. Praise God. In the beginning, so not in the beginning of God, because God is eternal and has always been, but in the beginning, when God started creating the world, in the beginning was the Word. It's the Word. What is your Word? What is your Word? Your Word is something you have said. Is that right? That's your Word. So in the beginning, when God was making the world, Adam and Eve wasn't a surprise. The fall of man was not a surprise. God knew all things, and he knows all things, and he knows tomorrow. He knows your tomorrow. He knows all things. He didn't have to quickly come up with a plan. He knew Adam and Eve would do what they did. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And from the very beginning... He had a word. The Bible tells us that in Romans chapter 4, verse number 17, it says that God calleth things which be not as though they were. God calleth those things that be not, they're not yet, as though they were. In other words, before something exists, God speaks it. That's what he did in the beginning. You read the very first few verses in Genesis. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. Before there was light. And then there was light. Amen? In the beginning, God said, let there be light. And there was light. God spoke it. He spoke the worlds into existence. He spoke the sun and the moon. The Bible says in Hebrews that we understand by faith that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Amen? God brings things into beginning by speaking them before they exist. That's his word. Amen. Jesus, after he rose from the dead, he appeared to his disciples. <clears throat> he appeared to his disciples. And they were shocked because one minute he wasn't there, and then the next minute he was there, you know. He just popped in the room. And after conversing with them a little bit, the Bible says he breathed on them. He breathed on them and said something to them. He said, receive you the Holy Ghost. Amen. And there's a lot of people that think that they, re that they received the Holy Ghost right at that moment. But they didn't. Because after he said that, he told them, he said, go tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be uh, endued with power from on high. For you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So when he breathed on them, the Holy Ghost went upon them. But what was he doing? He was 
being God. He was speaking things that be not as though they were. Can I tell you, even though that didn't happen that moment, it was as well as done because a few days later, the Holy Ghost came upon them and it fell upon them when suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were set in. They were, there appeared to them cloven tongues like as a fire set upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. What Jesus had spoken, amen, came to pass. It was a few days later. That was the Word of God. Jesus is the Word. Amen. And from the beginning, God had a plan to redeem man. Amen. That Word was with him in the beginning, but it didn't come to pass until Mary was overshadowed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Now, there's something very special about this Word that I'm telling you. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Listen to me. And the Word was God. Amen. Amen. God had planned from the very beginning to manifest Himself in human form. It wasn't a plan he just had to quickly come up with. He had it from the beginning. He was going to let the sins of man be laid upon himself. Amen? God was going to provide a lamb. God is spirit. Amen? He can't die as a spirit. But he took upon himself the form of a human being. Amen? And let the sin weight of man be laid upon him and suffered the penalty for the sins of the whole world. Amen? Praise God. John chapter 1 verse 14 says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. God manifested Himself in the flesh. The Bible says in Galatians 4.4, 4, When the fullness of time was come. You know, it was, the Word was in the beginning. But it was on God's time frame. Amen? But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son. Everybody say made. He was made of a woman, made under the law. So Jesus, that flesh, was made of a woman, right? Amen. That's, he was really human. Praise God. The Bible also tells us in Romans 1 and 3, it says that he was made, the human Jesus, the man Christ Jesus, he was made of the seed of David. He was, according to his humanity, he was a descendant of David, King David. Amen. It tells us in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 47, it says the first man referencing Adam, Adam and Eve, the first man, Adam, is of the earth, earthy. The second man, it's not talking about uh, Cain, which would be the second physical man, but he's referencing here Jesus. The second man, who is he? The second man is the Lord from heaven. Amen. That's who Jesus was. Amen. Amen. Praise God. He was the Lord from heaven. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 7 says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. A mystery, listen to me, if everybody knows it, it's not a mystery. Is that right? If everybody sees it, it's not something uh, that is a puzzle or that is, you know, no, you know, if everybody knows it, I mean, it's not a mystery. Amen. But Paul says we speak the, mis the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world uh, unto our glory. Praise God. Amen. Got to change my page here. Praise God. He says, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, look at what that says. Had they known it, see, not everybody sees and understands who Jesus is. He's just a baby in a manger, or was he just a good man, or was he just a prophet? He's more than that, folks. 
I'm telling you, I said, he's the Lord of heaven. If they had known who he was, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. That's who Jesus was. Amen. He was the Lord of glory. Amen. There's a lot of people gathered together today to celebrate the birth of Jesus, but they really don't understand who he is. Amen. I'm glad today that I know who Jesus is. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord, referencing Jesus, right? The Lord is that spirit. Amen. See that capital S there? When you see that capitalized S on spirit, that's not referencing uh, the uh, human spirit. Amen. It's referencing the only God that there is. The Lord is that spirit. Spirit. In other words, when we pray through to the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that's the Lord inside of us. He is that spirit, and yet he is also that man. He is that man that walked the earth and came and gave his life for us, but yet he's also that spirit that fills our lives. Amen. Oh, praise God. Do we understand and do we know who we have inside of our lives? A lot of people don't understand who is actually in their lives. It is Jesus inside of their life. He is that spirit. He is that man. Praise God. Amen. I sure didn't understand all that whenever I came to the Lord. I wasn't raised being a Christian or anything. And, and uh, you know, uh, you just don't perceive spiritual things much whenever you come out of living a life, you know, without any kind of knowledge of God or anything. <clears throat> Amen. I, and, you know, I, people was telling me, you know, you, you need Jesus in your life. Amen. You, you need the, the, the Holy Ghost. And, and in my thinking when I first came, I, yeah, this may sound funny to y'all, but I just didn't understand that kind of stuff, you know, uh, what spirits were or anything like that. And I didn't know how a human was going to come and get inside of me. Jesus, you do you think uh, Jesus as a, as a literal man? And he is a literal man. He is a real man. Praise God. But Jesus comes into our life. It's not his physical being that comes into our lives. It is the spirit that was inside of that, that man, Jesus, that comes inside of us. And that's really him. Amen. He is that spirit and he is that man. He can sit upon a throne in glory right now and yet be inside of each and every one of our lives by his spirit. Amen. He is that spirit. Praise God. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. It says, For there is one God and one mediator. A mediator is somebody that goes between. A go-between. God is a spirit. And God fills the universe. He's in this place right now. Amen. Amen. You can't see him with your eyes. Amen. In fact, many times it's, it's referenced just like Jesus breathed on the disciples and said, receive you the Holy Ghost. What was he doing? He was ushering forth air, wasn't he? Because that's, if you want to typify the spirit as something, that's kind of what it's like. It's like you can't see the wind. You can feel it. How many of you felt the spirit of God while going there singing those songs and worshiping? I felt this spirit. Come on, I felt something in this place. Amen. I didn't see it with my eyes, but I know it's here. Come on, when people start worshiping him, amen, his presence is manifest. Not with your eyes do you see it, amen, but you can discern it. You can understand. God is with us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. He is here in this place. Praise God. So there's one God and there's one go-between, between between, uh, one mediator between God and which is spirit, and men, the man, Christ Jesus, the human. Amen. If it wasn't for Jesus coming, if it wasn't for that baby that was born, not only being born, but going and spending 33 and a half years on this earth and going to an old rugged cross. Amen. Praise God. We wouldn't be able to have God in our lives today. We wouldn't have salvation today. Amen. Praise God. You're not good enough to have God. You're not good enough. You haven't reached the plateau of goodness enough to say, God, I'm able to have your presence in my life on my own, on my own merits, because there's nobody, amen, 
God is holy. Amen. Praise God. He is holy. And he won't inhabit corruption. Amen. So he let the penalty of our sins be laid upon this man, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. So that we could have that mediator. Amen. There's one God and one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. He didn't do it just for a select few people. He gave himself a ransom. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> Amen. A ransom is something that is put forth so that somebody can be set free. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's what Jesus has done for us. 1 Timothy 3.16 says, Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. This is the mystery. This is the thing that not everybody sees. But that God was manifest in the flesh. That's who Jesus was. It's amazing to think that the creator of the universe, amen, come and walked amongst us, amen. Praise God. He really is told all about him. Amen. And he came and walked amongst us and did exactly what the scripture said. Amen. Laid down his life for us. He came like he said he would. And you know what? I am confident that he's going to come again just like he said he would. Amen. Amen. He's going to come again. Praise God. God was manifest in the flesh. Yes, Jesus was a human. He was a real man. But he was more than a man. He was also, he was God. He wasn't 50-50. He was real 100% man, and he was real 100% God. I don't know how he can do all those things, but that's what the Bible declares. Amen. Amen. He's God being manifest in the flesh. Amen. Isaiah said it. You might have heard those songs if you was listening to them very well. This is where those songs came from. Isaiah 9 and 6. It says, for unto us a child is born. Everybody say human. That's human, isn't it? A child is human. I was holding my grandbaby up here a while ago. Little human. That's my youngest grandbaby. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Praise God. Unto us a child is born. This is before he ever came. A yeah. long time before he ever came. Spoke about him. <coughs> He's going to be born in Bethlehem. He's going to be born of a virgin. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. He's a son. He's given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Is that his name? What's his name? His name is Jesus. What's the prophet saying here? You know what? You know something today that even Isaiah didn't know. You know the name that is above every name that's named. That's the name of Jesus. Isaiah, he didn't get his actual name, but he got who he was. Amen. You see, that's, these things that we're fixing to read is not his name. His name shall be called these things. Wonderful. Counselor. Who is this child? He's the mighty God. I said, he's the mighty God. Not only is he the mighty God, there's only one mighty God. Amen. But he's the everlasting Father. I said he is the, he is the God of the Old Testament. He's the I Am that visited Moses. Amen. He's the one and only God that there is. But he's come in the form of a human being, a sinless human being. Amen. How did he do that? He didn't have an earthly father. The Spirit did this. Amen. The Spirit of God. He's the everlasting Father, and he's the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. What Jesus did is not going to stop, folks. I'm in something that's, that's going to last. I said, I'm in something that's going to last. If you want to be in something that's going to last, you need to be in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's not going to be an end. Upon the throne of David, upon his kingdom, to order it, to establish it with just, 
judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen? He already has performed it, and he will perform the rest of it. Amen? Amen. How many of you believe that today? Amen. I believe that today. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm fixing to quit, but amen. I just want to look back at Luke chapter 2, verse 7 one more time. <clears throat> I mentioned it already. Amen. Where Joseph and Mary went to Bethlehem. Amen. And there she was expecting. Amen. Amen. The time was just there for her to give birth. Amen. They were called to go to Bethlehem because Joseph was of the lineage of David, and that was the town he was from, Bethlehem. He was going there to be taxed. Amen. With his wife to be. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Here's another thing that a lot of people don't know, don't understand, is that Jesus had brothers and sisters. <laughs> Mary did not continue to be a virgin after Jesus was born. Joseph knew her not in, until Jesus was born. After that time, Joseph and Mary came together, had other children. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So she went there, and the Bible says in verse 7, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. <clears throat> Praise God. <clears throat> there was no room for them in the inn. That inn, I guess people coming to be taxed, wasn't really probably, you know, people just going there for necessarily something bad. Just the government was demanding people to go and pay their taxes and probably a lot of good people. And the inn just crowded. The inn just crowded. People flocking there, I suppose, and just filling it up. By the time Joseph and Mary got there, it was just full. There was just no room for them in the inn. So they had to go out in the stable. Amen. And there Jesus was born. And I thought about that so often. You know, <clears throat> Jesus is preached, and a lot of people hear it, and they go on their way. And, uh, you know, they'll hear it again here and there, and they'll just go on their way. And the reason why they just go on their way is because they got just like this innkeeper. He has so many things in their lives that there's no room for Jesus. Amen. The, the gospel of Jesus is being preached. Don't be like that innkeeper. You know, I think that they, you know what? They didn't understand who they had in their midst. No doubt. They just, if they had a really, like we read about the, the princes of this world, it says if they had known who he was, they would not have crucified him. I know the innkeeper just didn't understand probably who they had. And that's what a lot of people do when they hear the message of Jesus. It's a good story. It makes me feel comforted that somebody loved me and died for me. But do you really understand this is a God thing? This is salvation. This is what the world was made for. Do you understand who we're talking about today? Do you really understand who we're discussing today? 
You got to make room in your life for him. No matter what, no matter how full your life is with stuff, you've got to realize who you have that you're dealing with and get the stuff out of the way. You've got to make room for him. Don't make him go someplace else. If you don't, somebody will. It may be, you know, a humble person. Like going to that stable is pretty humbling. It may be that person down there strung out on drugs somewhere. You know, sleeping on a cardboard box. But you know what? If we won't, somebody will. He'll go where he's received. I want, him, I want to make a place for Jesus, don't you? Amen. Come on, I don't care how full my life is with stuff. There's some stuff's going to have to leave. If it's a choice between Jesus and the stuff, listen to me, there's stuff going to leave. I, praise God. I'm going to make room for Jesus. Amen. In fact, I want him to have the best spot in my life. Don't you? Come on. He wants the best spot in your life. Amen. And if that, you know, is not much, little is a lot when it's given to the Lord. You may not have much. Amen. But all he really wants is you. That's what he wants. Just you. That's all he wants. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He just wants you. Amen. Praise God. The old song says, I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Praise God. I found out when I gave my all to Jesus. Listen to me. He added so much more than what I ever gave up. The only things he ever asked me to give up is the things that's harmful to my life. Amen. Praise God. So tomorrow is Christmas. And I hope that somehow, amen, if it's not already, I hope it is, but somehow that Jesus will take the forefront of your life. Amen. And not only become a one-day thing where you talk about his birth, but give your heart and your life to him and make room for him in your life. Amen. He just wants you. That's what he wants. Stand with me if you would. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Leo. Praise God. Amen. Leo's just waving and telling me I didn't receive an offering. Is that what I didn't do? All right. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. If y'all will come, come on, Leo. We'll give you an opportunity to give before we are dismissed. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for allowing us, oh God, to have the opportunity to know you. My Lord Jesus, God, would you help us to let your word, your message sink into our hearts, oh God, and live for you and serve you, oh God. Thank you for all of our visitors that are here today. I pray you'll touch them and and that somehow work in their hearts and their lives. May they be drawn close to you and strengthened, O God, in each one that is here. We ask you now to receive this tithe and offering, God, as we, Lord, give it unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise.